Three Penn Central Jeeps, led by number 2266, pull a Delaware and Hudson train, possibly the RW6, into Hudson Yard in this mid-1970s photo. This train is bound for the DNH's Hudson Yard, which is on the northeast side of Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. From Hudson Yard, this train will continue south via the Wilkesbury Connecting Railroad to the Penn Central line, eventually reaching Sunbury and the Penn Central Buffalo line. Penn Central power was frequently used in pusher service on northbound DNH trains bound for Lanesboro. There, the Penn Central power would wait for the next southbound DNH freight and work in pusher service. When southbound RW6 arrived at Lanesboro, the DNH units would uncouple and move to the rear of the train, serving as the pushers. The PC units would serve as a head in power as the trains moved south over the Ararat Mountain and through the Lackawanna and Wyoming Valleys to reach Hudson. The DNH power, which had served as the pushers, would then be ready to pull the next northbound DNH train. The Delaware and Hudson acquired the Penn Central Wilkesbury branch as far as Sunbury with the creation of Conrail in 1976. The track it's shown in the photo today is now the property of Norfolk Southern and serves as the river line to the Buffalo line in Sunbury. In its heyday, the Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania area was a very complicated area railroad-wise, with the CNJ, the Lehigh Valley, the Delaware and Hudson, the Pennsylvania Railroad, the Lackawanna, the Erie, and the Lackawanna and Wyoming Valley Laurel Line, there were tracks seemingly everywhere. From its northernmost terminus of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, the DNH pretty much ended in Wilkesbury with a paper company called the Wilkesbury Connecting Railway. Jointly owned with the Pennsylvania Railroad, it was essentially used to connect the two roads and bypass the congested downtown. By the early 1970s, the DNH's main yard in town was known as the Hudson Yard. This was originally part of the Wilkesbury and Eastern, which was a subsidiary of the New York, Susquehanna, and Western. After the WBNE was abandoned, this section was sold to become the Wilkesbury Connecting Railway. Amazingly, while the Penn C and the DNH are now gone, the New York, Susquehanna, and Western still operates to this day. The Delaware and Hudson, Pennsylvania division itself ran from the connection with the Pennsylvania Railroad at Buttonwood Yard in Wilkesbury to the Erie Railroad's main line near Lanesboro and north to the DNH of Susquehanna division at Nineveh, New York. Today, what's left of the Hudson Yard is a forest of new growth trees, but the main line itself is still intact. We've just turned right off of Cleveland Street and onto South Oak Street, and we're now looking at a small slice of what's left of the Delaware and Hudson's Hudson Yard. For a comparison, here's a picture of what this grade crossing looked like back around 1967.
On this day, the sizable Roanoke, Virginia to Binghamton, New York train 10Z moves northbound through town. Unusual about today's train is that it's all general freight without a single waste container to be found.
Moving back to last year, a windy November 29 to be exact, I caught an impressive southbound Train 11Z with an equally impressive locomotive lash-up to match. Today's soup consists of six high horsepower locomotives, which includes an EMD SD70 ACC leading a DC Gevo, along with two Dash 9s and two AC44 C6Ms that were rebuilt from the Dash 9 series.
The Delaware and Hudson Canal Company was incorporated in 1823 to construct a canal between the Delaware River and the Hudson River to transport anthracite coal to New York City. The ground was broken for the D&H Canal in July 1825, and the canal opened between Rondout Creek near Kingston, New York, and Honesdale, Pennsylvania in October of 1828. To obtain anthracite coal, the D&H constructed the Delaware and Hudson Gravity Railroad in the Music Mountains near Carbondale between 1826 and 1829. Towards the late 1800s, the D&H realized that railroads were the future of bulk transportation, and the company began investing in stock and trackage. The canal carried its last loads of coal in 1898 and was subsequently drained and sold. The Jefferson Railroad was chartered in 1864 with the goal of constructing a line between Carbondale and the Erie Railroad's main line at Lanesboro. The line was financed and constructed by the Erie Railroad in 1869 through 1872. In return for gaining trackage rights over the D&H's Gravity Railroad, the D&H gained trackage rights over the Jefferson Railroad, providing an important connection to Scranton and Wilkes-Barre. The line was extended north to Nineveh, New York, to form the D&H's 93-mile-long Pennsylvania Division, which halted primarily anthracite coal from the Lackawanna and Wyoming Valleys in Pennsylvania to markets in upstate New York, New England, and Canada. In 1964, the Norfolk and Western wanted to acquire the Wabash and the Nickel Plate Railroads. The Interstate Commerce Commission informed them that to purchase the two roads, they would also have to purchase the Erie Lackawanna and the Delaware and Hudson. This is a scenario that preceded the Penn Central one in 1968. Both were placed into Dureco, a holding company owned by the NNW. After the Hurricane Agnes destroyed much of the Erie Lackawanna main line west of Binghamton, New York, and following the bankruptcy of numerous railroads in the 1970s, including the Erie Lackawanna and the DNH, the Norfolk and Western lost control of the Dureco stock. Erie Lackawanna petitioned for and was included in the formation of Conrail while the DNH was allowed to become an independent railroad. In 1980, Conrail sold the former Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Main Line from Binghamton, New York to Scranton, Pennsylvania to the Delaware and Hudson. As it was a much more flat and direct route to Scranton, the DNH opted to abandon the Pennsylvania division between Carbondale and the connection with the Erie Lackawanna at Brent, just east of Lanesboro, in 1982. The remainder of the Pennsylvania Division from Brant to Nineveh Junction, New York, was used for overheight vehicles, often carrying massive steam turbines from General Electric's Schenectady facility. But the remainder of the Penn Division was, too, abandoned after the Belden Hill Tunnel was enlarged in 1986 on the D&H Susquehanna Division between Binghamton and Schenectady, which allowed the D&H to route traffic over the ex Erie Lackawanna trackage from Jefferson Junction northward. The only Pennsylvania Division trackage that remains in use today is from Carbondale South through the towns of Mayfield, Peckville, Archibald, and Dixon City. It's owned by the Pennsylvania Northeastern Regional Railroad Authority and is operated by the Delaware-Lackawanna Short Line. Significant portions of the Delaware and Hudson Penn Division between Simpson and the New York State Line have been converted into the Delaware and Hudson Rail Trail. The abandoned 1904 Staruka Creek Bridge, not to be confused with the Erie Railroad Staruka Viaduct in Lanesboro, was renovated for use by pedestrians, cyclists, and horseback riders in 2019 through 2020. The project was funded by the Pennsylvania Recreational Trails Program, the Federal Highway Administration, and the State Bureau of Recreation and Conservation. June 22, 2024 was a red-letter date in local railroad history. Besides the fact that it was hot, very hot, so hot in fact that the display in my car registered 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Over on the regional Reading, Blue Mountain, and Northern, the mighty T1-2102 made its first trip into the Wilkes-Barre area with a lengthy excursion train with hundreds of passengers on board and hundreds more people giving chase trackside. I personally don't do large rail fan gaggles very often with the traffic, the chaos, the people getting into your shots and you getting into theirs. And then there's the always present discourtesy that comes from large crowds of people. Despite these discouragements, I managed to make it to Coxon Yard so that I could see the fast freighters number 5018 and 5019 guiding the big steam engine down and into town. Unfortunately, the railroad ran early and by the time that I got into the yard, all that was left was a parking lot full of empty cars. The silver lining that day was that another locomotive celebrity had come through the area. 
the Lehigh Valley Heritage Unit number 8104, what I affectionately call the Valley Girl, was the mid-train distributed power unit on the day southbound train 11Z. The zipper had two powered locos and a unit dead in tow up front with a long train of waste containers and general freight trailing from behind. And after an agonizing wait in the hot midday sun, the Z finally appeared from the forest and threw Hudson on its way to Roanoke, Virginia.
Check out that two-bay covered hopper. That's the CLSX number 5000, the class unit of the Cargill Incorporated Salt Division's hopper fleet. The 5000 is a plate C AAR type C112 Trinity two-bay that's used for hauling salts and other minerals. We did a deep dive into the operations of the Cargill salt mines of upstate New York and the railroad that hauls it a few videos back.